uh, for the invitation and the co-organization. Um, uh, so what I'd like to present precisely, as Jana said, is, is something that some thoughts that come out of this book I've just finished editing on uh, uh, Reading Capital, Althusser and his students Reading Capital from 65 with um, their essays by Badiou and Etienne Balibar and Bruno Bastilles and others. Uh, and uh, so I'd, I'd like to pursue a bit uh, some of the things that have started to become clear to me at, at the end of this long process. Uh, and I would start by changing the title of my talk just a bit uh, to Cavalles Althusser Badiou on the logic and theory, not of politics, but the logic and theory of capitalism. And I think you'll see why in a second, why what that shift implies. Uh, so to address the question of materialism today in relation to Alain Badiou's philosophy, I'd like to call attention to a number of related facts, facts that taken together might suggest a way forward in thinking about the problem of a materialist critique of capital today. Uh, the first of these I've already suggested in the modification that I've made to my talk from the logic of politics, uh, as it originally was, which is, of course, a central and unabated concern through the entirety of Badiou's writings, I'd like to draw our attention instead to a commonly observed curiosity in Badiou's thought, one that, though often observed, nonetheless can and should be thought through as something that's maybe more substantial than a simple lack or absence. What I'm thinking of is the well-recognized fact that despite, and correct me if you have any counter examples, but I, I, I can't come up with any, the well-recognized fact that despite Badiou's intellectual formation under Louis Althusser at the ENS, Normal Supérieur, in the late 50s, his ongoing collaboration with Althusser through the 60s, his ongoing commitment to this, to a certain post-Althusserian thought, and as well to the concept of communism, more generally, as we've already heard a, a number of times. Despite all that, Badiou's never developed a critique of the political economy of capitalism, a substantial one, I would say, in light, in particular, in light of the ontology articulated in being an event and logic, logics of worlds. Again, correct me if I'm wrong, I'd love to, to, to find somewhere where that exists. Similarly, despite his regular return to Marx, Badiou's writing has never ad devoted attention to Marx's capital, precisely, attending instead to the latter's historical and political writings on 1848, on Napoleon III, uh, above all, the appearance of novel political subjects of communism in the French Commune, uh, theorized in Marx's civil war in France. So that's my first point I want to discuss. The, se the second one, in the few minutes that we have, I'd like to interrogate what I think is an intriguing philological statement that Badiou makes in the preface to Logics of Worlds, where he says that his thought is the culmination of a line of modern French philosophy, a line, he writes, quote, passing through Cavaillès, Lotman, Desanti, Althusser, Lacan, and, he writes, myself. Badiou, never one for false modesty, is, I think, entirely correct in this statement. The meaning of this intellectual genealogy, however, is perhaps obscure. If you'll, if you'll allow me to reduce it in the name of simplicity in my comments here, I would simply put it in the skeletal form of my title, Cavalles Althusser Badiou. And I would do so precisely insofar as this school of thought allows us to imagine or point toward a necessary uh, 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 and imminent 
an imminent rereading of Marx's Capital, a way of addressing precisely this gap in Badiou's thought that I recalled a moment ago. And then my third point will be simply a consequence of the first two. If Badiou's thought has remained steadfastly disinterested in a, in a substantial critique of capitalism, the lo a logic of capitalism, and a reading of Marx's Capital more specifically, I'd argue uh, simply in a very schematic, quick way that is only suggesting a future research program, that Badiou's ontology nonetheless holds the promise of a radical and urgently compelling reading of Marx's masterpiece in the contemporary context of moribund global capitalism. My contention will be that this project has in fact already been projected and sketched out prospectively. And here it's interesting, my talk will, I think, intersect in interesting ways with Michal's talk on Badiou uh, and the mediator between Badiou and Marx. Because I'm going to argue that that mediator is precisely Pierre Macheret and his little forgotten, largely forgotten contribution to reading Capital from 1965. So on my first point, on Badiou's lack of engagement with capitalism, its logic, and Marx's capital specifically. Uh, there's a recent talk that he presented at, uh, this April at the ENS, the Normal Superior Seminar, Lecture de Marx. Uh, the talk is entitled, Qu'est-ce que j'entends par Marxisme? What I mean, what I understand by Marxism. And so, when I, he sent me this talk, I, I thought, oh, great, this is going to answer all my questions. It seems to promise to remedy this state of affair. Uh, but, of course, I, I, I went much too quickly and didn't carefully read the title of the talk itself. And reading the talk, uh, we see uh, that the content is not at all Marx or Das Kapital, although he does uh, passingly discuss those, or even the critique of capitalism more generally, but rather political Marxism and Badiou's own understanding of its politics and his relation to the politics of, let's say, uh, tradi traditional Marxism. In this dense and fascinating essay, which for lack of time I won't even attempt to summarize here, it's going to come out this fall, he, he says, with Edition Sociale, in France. Um, Badiou lucidly, however, indicates why the critique of political economy and Marx's capital have no substantial place in his philosophy. And I think it's fairly clear and evident. Badiou's is a philosophy of truths, of events, and the subjects who serve to support and carry forward those evental truths. None of these, however, truths, events, subjects, as Badiou understands the concept of subject, none of these are present in the system of capital Marx analyzed a century and a half ago, and which, of course, continues its imperious reign to this day, despite decades, if not centuries, of nominally anti-capitalist political struggle. Instead, Badiou recognizes, as we know, four what he calls in, the, yes, in this talk, registers or domains in the creation of truths, right? Science, art, politics, love. The logic and world of capitalism, the subject matter of Marx's capital, one might object, however, was of course famously claimed by Althusser and his students in Reading Capital, Leo Le Capital, to bear the status of a science. So wouldn't this indicate its proper location in the system of Badiou's thought, that is, under the category science? Badiou explicitly evokes this possibility in this recent talk, if only to dismiss it uh, somewhat out of hand, I think. That Marxism is a science, Badiou writes, was not only Althusser's affirmation, but if Marxism can be called the revolutionary science 
of the economy, quote, the heart of Marxist thought would, in this view, be the simultaneously analytical, critical, and dialectical edifice represented above all by Marx's capital. That is, this would be the case in the conditional. This would be the case if we could accept that Marx's critique of political economy is a science. But Badiou rejects the scientific set status of Marxist thought based on two claims. I think it's a talk, but I think it's still the dismissal is, um, let's say, too quick, I think. Anyway, uh, two claims he dis to dismiss the scientific status of Marxist thought. First, that Mar what Marx writes in Capital is a critique of political economy, as its subtitle indicates, of course, and not simply a system or a logic of capital. And it is marked, quote, quoting Badiou, it is marked by the negativity of the apparatus of classical British liberal economy, that is, Smith, Ricardo, etc. Secondly, Badiou denies that, quote, the general system of true or operative ideas that constitutes Marxism, and that he's affirming that Marxism consists of true and operative ideas, this general system can be, de he denies that it can be deduced, I'm still quoting, that it can be deduced transitively from the economy or even from a critique of the economy. So again, he quickly shifts, and that's the last appearance of Marx and Capital in this talk, he immediately shifts back to discussion of Marxism and the polit politics of Marxism, away from the critique of political economy and, and Capital, the book. Capitalism, though it undoubtedly constitutes a system with its attendant logic, a world, is categorically not the site of the production of the political truths Badiou takes to form the substance of Marxism, of, I would say, political Marxism. Here, I think Badiou's conclusion is correct and coherent given the focus of interest his thought maintains. Like, to pick a few examples, the Ancien Régime, the harmonic system of traditional Western music, or say the visual language of academic painting from say 19th century French academic painting. Similarly, capitalism is a state of affairs with its own transcendental logic. It is a world in the sense of the concept of a logic of worlds. And it's a situation with its own complex logic, but it's not the bearer or support for truths as Badiou understands the term. Nor, I would add, are there subjects of capitalism in the sense that other familiar term bears in Badiou's thought. That is to say, certainly, there are subjects of capitalism in the Althusserian sense of reading capital of Althusser and Balibar, subjects who are the supports, the träger of uh, the system, the structures of capitalism itself, but they are not subjects in Badiou's sense of the term in the world, the situation of, of capitalism. Capitalism, despite its status as the dominant logic of the modern and contemporary world, bears neither truths nor subjects of truth. Of truth. One can thus well understand Badiou's disinterest in its critique just as he has no logic of traditional Western harmony, he's more interested in, say, Schoenberg and Berg and Webern. He's disinterested in constructing a logic of capital and more interested in the event and the, polit the politics uh, of subjects of an event that would be in exception or subtraction to capitalism. A comment he makes on Althusser, I think, is very suggestive, still in this same talk from this April. He recalls how for Althusser, quote, the science of history was precisely the science of a history without a subject. 
This amounts to the explicit exclusion of the figure of the political subject and definitively of politics itself from the field designated by the term Marxism." Unquote. From this we can simply conclude with Badiou that not only the science of history, but the science of the history and logic of capitalism is without a subject. Again, a subject in Badiou's sense, not, not Althusser's sense. If one were to construct a logic of the world of capitalism along the lines of the formal logic of worlds in the book of that title, it is clear that whatever its formal regularities, its laws, its tendencies, for example, as we speak of Marx's famous law of the tendency of the decline in profit, this would be a world with neither events nor subjects, since for Badiou subjects are rare and exceptional and stand in exemption from the regularities and banal mere existence and fact, facticity, let's say, of any world. Even if Badiou's thought stands as the most original, developed, and compelling model of contemporary philosophy today, and I think this is the case, still, I would argue that Badiou's philosophy of politics, and as much as I subscribe to and, and, and uh, the, the description, the, the rich description of a politics of equality, of universality, of subjects, etc. Still, I think there's a certain, I would argue, anyway, let's call it a thesis, that there's a certain impoverishment in Badiou's philosophy of politics uh, that is due to this failure to carry through a critique of the political economy of contemporary capitalism uh, that perhaps falls back into a certain familiar logic of class struggle, even if it doesn't go under the name of the proletariat, perhaps of ex exploitation, etc. A traditional model that has been the object of critique uh, by, I think, very powerful critique by thinkers such as Moshe Postone, Robert Kurtz, Michel Henry aussi, also, to name uh, only three. Anyway, I wish to argue then, to move forward, that the solution to this underdeveloped dimension of Badiou's thought is precisely to bring the immensely original and formidable ontology of being and event and logics of worlds to bear against uh, the logic of contemporary capital. Here, I think Badiou shows us precisely where to turn in beginning such a project. To this, and this is my second point then, to this intellectual line of thought which, of which he is the contemporary culmination. Uh, the so-called tradition of historical epistemology this line of thought, quote, passing through Cavaillès, Lotman, Desanti, Althusser, Lacan, and Badiou himself. Let me very quickly just suggest a few points or markers that can delineate this tradition, its specificity, and its culmination in Badiou's philosophy in particular. We would have to begin, as my the title of my talk suggested by turning back to the fundamental ambition set forth in Jean Cavaillès's famous 1942 book, his final book that he wrote in captivity in a Nazi prison on the theory and logic of science, as well as uh, the second fundamental book, I think, would then be Althusser's 1965, Reading Capital. These two books, to speak only of them, articulate a novel and very singular conception of the object of science via the Spinozan distinction between the object of knowledge and the real object. This is Althusser's term in the, in the introduction to reading capital. Uh, and by the real object, he Althusser means capitalism. By the object of knowledge, he means the system of concepts elaborated in Marx's capital. 
The production process of the object of knowledge, Althusser writes, takes place entirely in knowledge. Similarly, for Cavalles, the object of knowledge is, quote, un objet sui generis, original dans son essence, autonome dans son mouvement. Uh, the object of knowledge is an object sui generis, original in its essence, autonomous in its movement. For Badiou, the construction of a logic cannot arise from the ground of lived experience. This is rather the construction of a logic entails the rejection of empiricism. Badiou writes in Logics of Worlds, the theory of the subject cannot be the theory of an object. That is why it is only theoretical, its only empirical content is metaphorical, and it tends toward the formal. The theory of the subject is axiomatic. It cannot be deduced because it is the affirmation of its own form. Second commonality between these three thinkers, Cavalles, Althusser, Badiou, uh, is the uh, uh, criterion of adequacy of any conceptual apparatus turns around the concept of demonstration, of demonstrability, that is derived explicitly uh, for Cavalles from uh, Bolzano, from Bernard Bolzano. Uh, for Bolzano, as for Cavalles, for all three of these thinkers, demonstration constitutes the proper apodictic procedure to substantiate uh, uh, the adequacy of any concept. In Cavalles's terms, quote, il n'est qu'une façon de s'imposer par une autorité qui n'emprunte rien au dehors, il n'est qu'un mode d'affirmation inconditionnel, la démonstration. La science, si elle est, est toute entière démonstration. There is only one fashion, only one way of imposing uh, uh, by, author by an authority that borrows nothing from without, au dehors. There is only one mode of, of unconditional affirmation, demonstration. Science, if it is, is entirely demonstration. And Cavalles is footnoting here Bolzano. Althusser, following Cavalles's critique of Bolzano, adds to this assertion, let's say Cavalles's appropriation of Bolzano, adds to this assertion, assertion the problematic of history, of the relation, in other words, between the demonstration of an adequate and self-sufficient scientific truth and the norms of demonstration of necessity holding at any moment in the history of thought. So Althusser in 65 writes, the essential problem presupposed by the question of the existing type of demonst demonstrativity, demonstrabilité, is the problem of the history of the production of different forms in which theoretical practice recognizes the validating norms it demands. These are the forms required, I'm still quoting Althusser, these are the forms required to give the order of theoretical discourse the force and value of a proof, of a demonstration. Badiou sustains this Cavaillesian, Althusserian focus on demonstration, but also on history. For example, in Logics of Worlds, where he concerns himself with the formal theory of the appearance or existence of any being in a world. Even here, even here, however, Bolzano's criterion of demonstrability retains its uh, axiomatic value. The truth of a theorem is to be, quote, demonstrated. Badiou writes, quote, if a mathematical truth must appear for its eternity to be effective, the process of this appearance is a demonstration. Cavalles, Althusser, and Badiou's logics share a final, a third, and preordinate imperative, the logical critique and displacement 
of the founding role of consciousness and lived experience in post-Husserlian phenomenology. For Cavayes, it's always the case for phenomenology that the reference to the primacy of conscience, consciousness uh, permits the suppression of all logical difficulties. Althusser argues powerfully against any interpretation of capital that would have recourse to, quote, an idealism of consciousness, mind, or thought, unquote. Uh, in this view, the production of knowledge is not the attribute of a phenomenological subjectivity, whether Kantian, Hegelian, or Husserlian, but the unfolding of the autonomous movement of ideas. In contrast to this interiority of the intentional productive subject, the construction of a rationalist epistemology finds its ground in its own adequacy. Of course, this is something that uh, both Cavayas and Althusser take from Spinoza. Cavayas writes, an, an absolute logic can only draw its authority from itself. It is not transcendental. Une logique absolue ne peut tirer son autorité que d'elle-même. Elle n'est pas transcendantale. For Badiou, finally, the formal logic of a theory of the subject, as well as his logic of worlds, is an explicit rejection of a phenomenology grounded in lived experience. Quote, if we think a truth procedure in terms of its formal determinations alone, we find, the se we find sequences of signs and various relations without ever needing to pass through human lived experience." Unquote. Such a logic, Badiou continues, stands opposed to the tradition of thought in which subject would designate a register of experience a schema for the distribution of the reflexive and non-reflexive, i.e. phenomenology." Unquote. So let me conclude my third point then, as I suggested in beginning, that these two aspects of Badiou's thought, the absence of a substantial critique of capitalism on the one hand, and on the other Badiou's fidelity to and profound development of this Spinozan logical epistemology of Cavayes and Althusser, that taken together, these two points suggest both the necessity and procedure or formal structure or even logic of a critique of contemporary capitalism. Though, of course, I can't even begin to construct such a reading of Marx's magnum opus in a few minutes here today. For me, it's a a future project that I hope to carry through. Still, if we return today to Althusser and to his and his students reading Capital, to this text that specifically combines the Spinozan epistemology of Cavayes with an attempt to construct the conceptual logic of capitalism, we find today in the newly published complete edition, in English it's coming out, it's just come out a month ago with Verso, uh, it came out, I believe, in German last year. Uh, I think as well, you know, that, that, the, that Reading Capital uh, was published internationally in truncated versions from which, uh, uh, in which only uh, uh, Althusser and Balibar's contributions were retained. Rancière's, uh, Macherie's, and Estable's uh, essays were all eliminated uh, uh, until the 1990s proof version replaced them, by which point uh, Althusser was largely a theoretical uh, dead dog, to say, not, uh, uh, at least point of disinterest. Uh, so who went back to read those forgotten essays? I think that when we look at this complete text today, one, the most extraordinary thing I found in editing this book and looking back at Reading Capital is this extraordinary, lamentably overlooked text by Macheret, A propos du processus d'exposition du capital. There's a, there's a volume of, of interviews with people on Althusser that just came out this year, Althusser et nous. And in it, Macheret has, a, has, a, has a, a, 
an interview and he talks about his piece in Reading Capital and he just dismisses it entirely. He says, it's worthless. It's a piece of juvenilia. I, there's nothing in it. I didn't pursue any of the ideas. It, it's, a, you know, it's not worth anything. Uh, uh, and uh, I think he's completely wrong. And so, okay, it's a, it's a piece of juvenilia. It reads like an explication de texte, but it's an explication de texte by one of the great readers of uh, Spinoza, Hegel, and Marx of our age. It's Pierre Machéry's explication de texte. Anyway, it's brilliant, I think. The point of the short chapter is to investigate Marx's conception and practice of the scientific exposition of the principal concepts of capital in the first five pages of volume one of capital. Right? So wealth, use value, exchange value, value five pages of capital, first five pages. My contention is that in the absence of a philosophical construction of the logic of capitalism that would adhere as much to the criteria of truth and adequacy of Spinoza and Cavalles as to Marx's capital, I think that's the project begun by the seminar published as Reading Capital, but arguably not carried through as a systematic logic of capital, the four volumes of capital as a whole, in the absence of that logic, Machere's essay sketches out a highly suggestive and novel interpretation of capital and Marx's theory of value specifically via a mathematics-based ontology and logic, a veritable prolegomenon to, the, to this Badiouian logic of capital that I'm calling for. So to conclude then, recall first that Badiou has convincingly argued that it's mathematics, as has already been suggested uh, 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 and described by Yana, it's mathematics that most adequately articulates what can be thought and expressed of being itself in subtraction from all specific empirical quant qualities and experience, and that Badiou has limited his phenomenological investigations, his logics of worlds, to the fields or conditions he identifies as politics, science, art, and love. As he writes in the lectures recently published as Mathematics of the Transcendental, quote, being is pure multiplicity without ground or meaning. Experience is not con constitutive there is no generic life. In a given situation, there is only the flat surface of indifferent multiplicity. And furthermore, this surface carries the name of mathematics, that which concerns itself only with the multiple being of a multiplicity to the exclusion of all qualities and intensities. I am astonished to find today in reading Machere's long forgotten text from 1965, that there he founded, began at least, a categorical, I would say, proto Badiouian construction of a critique of capital centered around Marx's preeminent concept, value. In this very brief explication de text, Machere argues in terms similar to those I've outlined for Althusser, for Cavalles, that the concept of value, if it is to adequately conceptualize the enabling conditions of exchange, can only uh, be constructed through the extinction of the illusory empirical concrete. Machere writes, exchange manifests itself first of all, although indirectly, as the suppression of every quality and on the basis of this disappearance, it brings to light a proportion, that is, a mathematical relation, a proportion. Value can only be distinguished on the base of a quantitative and no longer qualitative diversity, that is, the equality of, of two commodities whose use value is non-identical. In this sense, Machere precociously identifies a mathematical ontological operation in Marx's passage from the empirical concept of wealth to the purely quantitative relation of exchange, reduced 
quote, reduced to an equation before reintroducing the concept of quality in an entirely different fashion, though, via value. He argues, Machere, that it is, quote, the equation that provides the means of escaping from the exchange relation and seeing the concept of value. In this view, unquote, in this view, it is the non-empirical, quote, general form of measurement, unquote, Machere argues, that is, labor power, that enables the relation of exchange. To continue the comparison with Badiou, this enabling condition of exchange is analogous to what we might call, what he calls in Logics of Worlds, the transcendental. So let me finish there uh, 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 and, and simply conclude uh, from this brief suggestion that it is this intensive degree of abstraction uh, following his, in the footsteps of his mentors, Cavayas and Althusser, that retrospectively announces the possibility of a mathematics-based logic of capitalism that could adequately account for the non-empirical conceptual structure of the value form itself. So to conclude, Badiou has no critique of capital, and rightly so, since the logic of capital bears no capacity for either events or subjects, as Badiou understands them. Nevertheless, two, there could exist such a logic, which would take the form of a pure Spinozan conceptualization, opposed to empiricism and phenomenologies of experience, grounded in and building upon this preliminary model we find in Machere's contribution to reading capital. Three, not only could this Badiouian logic of contemporary capital exist, but I think it's the case that it should, that it must be constructed. How can one hope to imagine an anti-capitalist politics today without having discerned the logic of this structure, the logic governing such basic questions as whether capitalism, and I think this is the site, to use Badiou's term, of the question uh, 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 that has to be addressed, whether capitalism bears only a single, eternally renewed, cyclical dynamic of crisis and recovery, of class conflict, or whether, as Mark Arcs argued, capital in fact bears another equally fundamental logic, a terminal, unilinear, even post-human dialectic, what Marx called the moving contradiction of capital, in which machines and automation processes expel humans mercilessly from production, even as the social structure of valorization continues to depend upon living labor as the universal substance of value. Were contemporary capitalism to be shown to possess such a, trans, such a terminal post-human dialectic, and were it more, moreover, in fact, shown to be entering the death throes of a collapse in the global capacity to valorize value, were this to be demonstrated adequately, it's certain that an entirely novel conception of politics would be required beyond the Leninism of your a politics that might take form as the struggle against a post-capitalist descent into global barbarism in the name of the concept most dear to Badiou himself, communism. Thanks.